All right, here I'm going to show you guys how to unwrap uh, limbs and torsos in this particular case. He's a little unique, so we will be isolating so that's only this part of him. His arms are inside out, and um, I had a field day because I duplicated my geo. Um, again, his arms are—he's able to summon his arms out of his body. Yeah, we're talking nerd stuff here. All right, so if you ever want to do check it out and curious about what I'm talking about, you can go to uh, www dot fistful of magic dot com and you can check out our comic book and web series um so let's get back to topic here so what i'm gonna do is show you how to unwrap a body now we talked about the head and i talked about how you can un unwrap the head in this particular case we use the cylindrical map isolating the eyes and the mouth keeping them away i should say deselecting and keeping them away from our original selection so it was just mainly the body of the face without the interior of the mouth the interior of the eyes and the ears Everything else was selected, and you can actually see it here. That's an earlier version I did a while back. And you can see that the ears are left out, and the interiors, there's the interior of the mouth, and other things which are not as important have smaller UV space. Now in Maya, what we're going to do is I'm gonna show you how to approach limbs first up, and then the same theory applies when it comes to the body. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, go to Faces mode. I'm going to go to Paint Selection Tool. Now, Paint Selection Tool by default will always want to go to Vertices mode. But in this case, we don't want it to. So you want to right-click, go to Faces. And I hit the B key here just to increase my brush size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this arm. And there's a couple ways you can do this, but I'm going to use the Paint Selection Tool. I'm going to select this arm. And the nice thing about using the paint selection tool is that it doesn't has built-in back face culling. So I'm not really selecting the other side, which is kind of nice. Because what we need to do first up is select one half of the arm. And I'll take it up to the shoulder in this case. And I'll deselect what I don't need, so I'll hit control to do so. So I just want to get the half of the arm. Now you can do the front half or the back half or the top half or bottom half. That's up to you. So with this half of the arm, let me make sure my selection is correct, which this, with, with this half of the arm at this point, what I can do is I can go in here, and you'll notice in my UV space it's real tiny because he actually has a jacket on. If you look at the uh, original one, he has a jacket at this point. He really doesn't take his jacket off in any of the thing, shots that we have. Maybe later on he will, but the rig is not set up for that right now. So I'm going to grab the arm here, and I'm going to planar map this guy. And the nice thing about using the planar map is when you set the planar map correct, actually, let's go back to polygons. We want to set it to best fit plane. And when you set it there, which is the correct way to set it, um, it'll actually grab where most of the faces are facing and try to project or try to give you the interactive selection of where those faces are, are set, give you the correct position in 3D space. It basically estimates or averages out where each one is uh, pointing and gives you this interactive selection based on that. So I hit apply, and you'll see we have our, our, our little UV set set up here. You'll see the shell of it outlined, and then we see our interactive placement here. And if we look in here, we'll see there is the actual arm that's just been unwrapped. Because we have our uh, toggle shaded UV display, we can see where the overlapping UVs are at. Now, when it comes to rigging, you do want to make sure your stuff is unwrapped because it's just easier. Maya will use the vertices points as a roadmap for the bones. Probably later in future versions of Maya, that won't be as important. You can get lucky sometimes not unwrapping stuff, but I don't recommend it because if you run into problems, it's going to suck for you. Um, so you always want to make sure there's no overlapping UVs because Maya can get confused with the weight information. I just want to make sure I made that point. So we have the UV shell out here for the arm. Now, if you want to make sure you can see where your UVs begin and end, what I like to do is go to, I'm going to go to my custom tab here, and I have my um, right here custom polygon display button already set up. But to go there, you want to go to display polygons. And I'm not going to automatically go there. I want to mess with the settings here so I can show you some stuff. Custom polygon display. And I want to turn on my texture borders. I'll turn off my border edges, but texture borders. What this does can show you where your UVs begin and end on your 3D model. Now, when it comes to selecting your edges and your faces in here and your UV points, you might want to turn it off. But in 3D space, you can see where your shells begin and end. You can see there's the top of the neck, there's the head, 
area, and you can see we just made the arm. So if I did selected that, you would see there's still an outline there. So I'm going to turn that off for a second and hit apply. There we go. So let's go to our arm, which we just unwrapped. Grab this here, and I'm going to use the unfold tool interactive. And we're going to unfold that. And look how clean that came out. Look how nice that was. Just by me planar mapping one side. And the same thing can happen too when it comes to the head. You can use the same theory. You can planar map the front of it, and it'll give you the whole head in your UV space. And then all you need to do is cut the back of your head, and you can use the unfold tool. But remember to isolate the inside of the eyes, the ocular cavities, the inside of the mouth, oral cavity, and the ears. Make sure those are not selected if you decide to use the planar map function, which I just did, and to cut the UVs on the back of the head and then to use the unfold tool. So we did that with the arm, it came out really nice. All I need to do is scale it down appropriately for my shot. Again, every UV is determined on the shot or what's going to be seen. And uh, let's turn back on our texture borders, hit apply. And you can see where we left off. And now I can go in here and go to faces. And we could have even created a selection by memory. So what I mean by that, let me go ahead and select the rest of this arm, and I'll show you if you need to, and your model's all done, you're not going to do any more editing. Oh, we don't want to do vertices, control Z. Faces, Maya, faces. you got to rem remind him sometimes. We can actually have Maya remember our selection, so we don't have to reselect. But the borders are nice because they show us where we left off. I don't recommend leaving that on, though, if you're going to do some more editing only when your UVs are ready to go and uh, you're doing your selections and going through your process. So what I mean by editing is if I left this border shell on and I went to Maya, oh, let me get that last part. And I went to Maya to try to see what those UVs look like, like on the border edge, if I selected one edge, it would be too thick and you wouldn't be able to see the other edge on the other side because it shows up in your UV layout, your zero to one area. All right, so now that we got this guy all selected, oh, let's double, let's hit Control and deselect that. And UV selected, yay! We're gonna do the same thing, we do planar map. Create UVs, planar map again. Move them over to the side. Go to UV, select this, Control, select shell. And we'll do the unfold tool. Look at that, really nice. And uh, just because of their angle, their scale might be a little bit off, but you can test it out by putting the checkerboard pattern on here, and you can even stitch it. Now, this is what I meant by the UV shells being thick. If I go and you select the edge, it's gonna be hard to see because that UV shell is on. So when you go to edit your UVs, you wanna make sure you turn that off, and you can hit apply. And then now it's easier to see where the UVs begin and end. Let me go to edges. And make sure you're not in your unfold tool because you could select until you pass out, but this guy's going to prevent any tools from working outside of him. So you hit W. I'll just hit the W key, just simple translation. There we go. So we can see where these border edges begin and end. So if we want, we can move and sew this guy and then have the seam maybe face underneath the arm if we wanted to. In our case, it's going to uh, be underneath the arm, which is convenient. So let me move these shells out of the way. I'm going to grab. UV shells here, control, right click, two shell, move them out of the way just for a second. And I'm going to rotate them a little bit. So I'm just going here and I'll just hit the E key, rotate them, I can hit the J key if I want to have it lock into place. And as you open these up, you'll see that you can get some of these other tools to open up here, like the rotation tool. That allows you to rotate your UVs, which is hidden. Select shell. There's another way to select shells. Just right click if you're super lazy. That would be me. Rotate this guy. Hit the W key. Move him into place. Now you'll notice the scale's a little bit different on these guys. And again, to check this out, I'm going to go right click on this guy, sign a new material, do Lambert, with that Lambert selected, I'm going to go in here and grab a checkerboard pattern. So you can check scale. There we go. 
we can see they're a little bit different. Definitely the seams going to give us a little bit of trouble. Let's select that arm again. So what we can do to get this stitching correct, I'm going to go grab this guy. Select shell. Let me make sure he's unfolded to the maximum amount. Okay. Grab this guy. Right click. Select shell. I'm being totally lazy. Not hitting control. And my hand's reminding me of that because it's kind of tired. Unfold that guy. All right. So they're to the maximum. So what we're going to do now is get this guy's um, edges to match up. So I'm going here. If I can be completely lazy, let me make sure I get out of that tool because it won't let me select anything. I can go in here and just grab all of these edges, deselect what I don't need, and I can do move and sew. Now with them in context, what you can do from here is then run another unfold. So now that they're pally wallies, we can unfold that. And you get a lot better display with that. And you make you force them to be of the same scale and size. All right. So that's a quick way you can unfold the arm. And then what you can do is strategically place your seam. In our case, we did, it's on the bottom here. And that's OK. We can strategically place our seam underneath the arm. So I probably should have uh, traced that a little bit better. But look how nice that actually fitted really well. All right, so that's one way you can approach the arm. And that's also the same way you can do the torso. So I can select the torso, planar map it, unfold it, and then planar map the back, keeping my seam right down the middle. And the nice thing about this, if your character has clothes, if I was to do this jacket, I can make my seam right at where the actual clothing seam is at. And I can make my texture in that area, which is kind of nice. Hands are the same way. Planar map the top, and then you planar map the back end. And then what you can do with that division, stitch them right here on the edge of the palm. Okay. So um, ours are separated, and that's fine. But I may go in there still and stitch it so that I can just make a little glove stitch around that area because you can see that he has gloves on. Okay. So hopefully this helps you guys out to understand this. And from here, we would change his scale and put him in the right position, in the right area. Oh, we got to make sure I select shell on this guy. And you scale it down to where you want it to be. You see that it acts like a magnifying glass. Keep that in mind, the smaller scale you have, the lower resolution your texture is going to be. The higher scale, you're going to get a higher resolution. It's kind of like logic dictates here. We're using this as a magnifying glass. That's about, about it for this lesson. I'm going to make a few more. Um, we're going to probably move on to Mudbox. I think you should be able to get the theory from here on how to planar map. Oh, but there's one more thing I do want to mention. I mentioned uh, creating selection sets. So if you do, let's grab this guy. Say you are have a very you have a very complicated character, and you don't want to have to select the region over and over again. You know you're not going to be editing the model anymore. You can go to create sets, quick selection set, and we can make this shoulder. And that shoulder now is in a quick selection sec, believe it or not. So you don't have to reselect it all the time. So I can go to edit. We can go to our, let me see where I put it here. Edit, there you go. Quick selection sets, shoulder, and I'll select it for us. So you could do that with all your UV shells if you wanted, and that will save you some time to get there really quick. If for some reason you, 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 you know, obviously you don't want to reselect it again, or maybe you want to edit it. This makes it a little bit faster to be able to grab those sets really quick. And again, I went to create, sets quick selection set and then i went to edit and under edit i went to quick select sets and then their shoulder and you can have a whole bunch of those in there all right that's about it man so now it for real it's over but i thought i would give you a little bit of uv theory